This video will provide you with one way you can connect a Wi-Fi communicating camera with the internet, and thus to your server. We looked at several possible ways of doing this, and provide what we think is the best way in terms of cost and efficiency. First, I will take you through an overview of the system, and then take you back through in more detail. This system starts with a commercially available Wi-Fi communicating camera from Buckeye. This model can be set up like most camera traps, but has a much larger battery because of its ability to transmit and receive information through wireless communication. You could charge the battery using commercially available solar panels. The camera sends information to a Buckeye base station. The base station connects to our computer, an Intel compute stick. which in turn connects to the internet through a commercial cell hotspot. All of these devices are powered by a large battery that is also recharged with a similarly large solar panel. This was an overview. I will now take you through each component in a little more detail. Solar power provides a way to extend the life of your setup in the field. Wi-Fi communication is a heavy power user, so large batteries and solar panels have to be included in the overall project. I am going to demonstrate two basic setups, but other setups are possible and may be preferable. The Buckeye camera attaches to a sealed lead acid 12 volt battery housed in this battery pack. The right plug on the battery pack connects to the camera while the left plug connects to the Buckeye solar panel. If you don't have a Buckeye solar panel, you could use your own by drilling a hole in the battery pack and carefully attaching alligator clamps to the battery post. Depending on the solar panel you have, you may need additional cables, but our panel has an attachment that ends in alligator clamps. Sealing the hole with silicon putty will help retain some water tightness. The PC-based device comes with a USB cable that provides power and transfers data. To use the pc base, you must first install the included software from Buckeye on the computer you are going to use, in our case, the Intel Compute Stick. You can install the Buckeye software, also known as the X-Series Network Manager, by downloading it from the Buckeye website or via the included disk, which in our case needed an external CD drive. Since the compute stick boots up upon receiving power, it's best to plug the AC adapter into its power source last, after carrying out the following steps. Plug the USB cable from the Buckeye X-Series PC base into one of the two blue USB 3.0 ports on the AC adapter. USB 3.0 ports are almost always colored blue to distinguish them from USB 2.0 ports, which can come in a variety of colors. Plug in the AT&T cellular hotspot USB cable into the other USB 3.0 port. It doesn't matter which of the two devices is plugged in first, as long as both are plugged in before the compute stick boots up. In our tests, the compute stick occasionally would not recognize the PC base or the hotspot if it was plugged in after boot up. First, connect the alligator clamps from the power converter to the battery posts of your SLA battery. Now, in our instance, we have to turn the power converter on then, we plug the Intel Compute Stick AC adapter into one of the available slots. Finally, 
plug the USB Type-C cable into the AC adapter and then into the Intel Compute Stick. The blue light is illuminated on the Intel Compute Stick, showing that it is powered and turned on. It is important to first activate the hotspot on a device that is already connected to the internet. You'll need to use a number printed on the included SIM card during activation. The SIM card on our model was under the removable lithium-ion battery and required a credit card to remove from its clamp. The device turns on when plugged into the Compute Stick and after installing the Netgear drivers, acts as an Ethernet cable connection. This means that you can transfer data through the hotspot from the compute stick to a server connected to the internet. In our test, this means that when a camera trap takes a photo or video, that file can be immediately transferred to our home server at the Road Ecology Center and managed by the CAM1 web system. Alternatively, if the hotspot is not connected to a PC, it can, be, it can also broadcast a short-range Wi-Fi signal. Setting up the Wi-Fi network is done on the screen on the device. While setting up the compute stick, the AT&T hotspot, and the PC base, a keyboard, mouse, and monitor are necessary. In the field, these will not be necessary, as the compute stick will now be automated from the moment it powers on to deliver photos to the internet. Please take some time before using this guide to set up your compute stick. Compute sticks are sold with Windows 10 or no operating system, implying that you install a type of Linux or your own copy of Windows 10, as older Microsoft OSs are not supported. Please update the OS to its latest version and use some form of antivirus. Much of the software needed to be installed on the compute stick has been covered in earlier steps. In addition, you will need Dropbox. Please install Dropbox and sign in with the account that you would like to share photos with. Optionally, install TeamViewer. TeamViewer allows you to remotely access this PC as a quote-unquote client PC. TeamViewer is free for personal use, but not for institutions. Lastly, while setting up the Compute Stick, at t Hotspot, and the PC Base, a keyboard, monitor, and mouse are necessary to use the Compute Stick. In the field, these will not be needed, as the Compute Stick will now be automated from the moment it powers on to deliver photos to the internet. After the installation is complete, start the software. The X-Series Network Manager will automatically download the newest version and may restart. If the PC base is attached, a firmware update may also download for the device. In the Network Manager, click Add Remove Device and drag a camera next to the picture of the PC base. If the camera is unregistered, it will automatically connect to the PC base and we will be visible in the X-Series Network Manager. From here, you could change the camera settings such as image size and monitor the battery level. Firmware updates for the camera will be downloaded automatically through the X-Series Network Manager and pushed to registered cameras. Registers ca Registered cameras will automatically install and reboot when firmware updates are pushed to them by default. The X-Series Network Manager does not start up when Windows boots up. To allow the Network Manager to start when Windows starts, simply copy the desktop icon for the X-Series Network Manager to the Startup folder.
open the run dialog by pressing Windows key and R and type shell colon startup. Paste the desktop icon into this folder. As you could see, I've already pasted the X-Series Network Manager shortcut into this folder, as well as the Drop It shortcut. We will get to that in another part of this video series. The open source software Drop It is needed to be able to move photos from the default location provided by the X-Series Network Manager to Dropbox, where the photos will become available on the internet. First download and install Drop It. Drop It will need to run at startup like the X-Series Network Manager, so add the desktop icon to the startup folder as shown in clip 2. Paste the icon into the folder. Drop It acts on a series of rules that the user first must define. After starting Drop It, right click the icon that appears on the desktop and click Associations. Click the button with the plus sign to add a new rule. As you can see, there is already an existing rule for us. It is important to name your rule. Give it a good name that is unique. Second, we will define where Drop it looks for files and what files it will look it will take. As you can see, we are looking in the Buckeye folder for JPEG images. The star character is a separator. I will now show you where we got the location of the photos. This photo, this folder, I should say, will contain all of the photos taken by this camera. Every additional camera attached to the PC base will have its own individual folder. Next, we select the action. We want to move the photos, which are JPEGs, to this destination folder. This destination folder could be anything, but it needs to be in Dropbox. Hit save when you're done editing this association. Close this window. Now, Right-click the icon again and select Options. Under Main and the subheading Processing, click the checkbox next to Ignore Unassociated Files and Folders. This will tell Drop It to ignore any files that are not JPEG uh, files taken by the cameras. This will prevent Drop It from hanging should any other file appear in that folder. Next, go to the tab Monitoring, and under Field Monitoring, or Folder Monitoring, click the box next to Enable Scan of Monitored Folders. This is the time interval that Drop It will monitor that folder and perform the association that we set for that folder. Add a monitored folder by clicking the Add button. We already have a monitored folder. Again, this is the location that the Buckeye X series network monitor will be placing photos taken by camera 1. 
When you're done, hit OK. Files will now move between the X-Series Network Manager and Dropbox in an automated fashion. The final step before deployment in the field is to disable password login for users on this machine. Disabling password login will allow Dropit and the X-Series Network Manager to load as soon as Windows loads. This is important if the machine ever loses power in the field and reboots. To disable user login, please type the following in the search field. N E T P L W I Z. Then run this command. More than likely, you will already have this box checked. Uncheck this box and then hit apply. You will be prompted for your username and password. Hit OK, and then hit OK. Restart the machine to see the effects. Thank you for watching this training video. I will now briefly summarize our overall setup. This is a Wi Fi communicating camera from Buckeye. It is powered by a large battery pack which is charged in the field with a solar panel. The Buckeye camera communicates with the PC base. The PC base connects to our computer. Our computer, this Intel Compute Stick, runs the X-Series Network Manager, which allows us to monitor the Buckeye cameras and receive pictures from them. The pictures that we receive are moved by the open source software Dropit to Dropbox. Dropbox sends the photos to our home server at the Road Ecology Center, which are then managed by the CAM1 web system. This is accomplished through the attached AT&T hotspot which allows us to connect to the internet.